Hey there, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Violet. And today I want to share with you how to make these beautiful yet very simple 4th of July patriotic home decors that you can use um, supplies that most likely you already have in your home. So let's go ahead and get started with our first DIY. What you're going to need first is a bag of these stars. They're the glitter um, vase fillers that you can get at Dollar Tree. And then also I am just grabbed some color beads that are red and blue. So what I did was basically just figure out what kind of design I wanted with the stars, how I wanted to um, line them up or what I wanted to do. So there's so many different ways you can do this. You can use all of the glitter stars that come in the bag or you could do it like I did and just use certain colors um, and then save the rest for another project. So what I did in between each one of my white stars, that's the way I decided to make my garland. I just put a red, white, and blue, I'm sorry, a red and blue bead um, alternating each bead. So once I figured out exactly how I wanted to do my garland, I went ahead and just started stringing them through some um, rope. And all I did was put some thread, I'm sorry, and all I did was grab a thick needle, the biggest needle I had, and then I grabbed some thick thread and went ahead and started stranding my stars and beads. So the way I did it was basically, since these are foam, you kind of just push it down and pull that needle through your stars. Now I did it kind of in the middle of each one of the stars, if you can see. Um, as long as you know that it's you're placing it to where it's not too thin or too close to the edge so it won't pop through. Just go ahead and make sure you at least put it somewhere close or if not right in the center of each one of your stars. And just run it through that thread and now I'm going to grab a bead and then separate my stars that way. And again, like I said, this is all your style, your taste. You can even um, sand these stars down a little bit and maybe paint them so you won't have that glitter. Um, that's something that I had thought about doing. But after I started lining everything up, I just thought, you know, it would look really festive and fun to leave them as is with the glitter. But if you guys do do that and decide to sand them down and paint them a different color, make sure to tag me on Instagram with your creations because I'm curious to see how that works. And um, I've never done the foam stars or any kind of face filler foam um, and sanded them down and painted them. I might do that with my next project uh, just because I want to know how good it would look or how it would um, stand out or not. So yeah, let me know if you guys do decide to do that and let me see that picture of your creation because I'm curious to see how that looks. So once you're done with your garland and you're happy with the length and how you've designed it, go ahead and grab any color of ribbons that you'd like or you can just grab some jute twine. I decided just to grab some red, some white, some blue ribbons, just whatever color uh, kind of style I had on hand as long as those colors were in the ribbon. So as you can see here, I'm kind of playing with the different color ribbons, playing with some nautical rope to see if I wanted to add that onto my, um, the tail of my garland or not. So I ended up going ahead and just wrapping some jute twine around maybe three to four times just to get it all the same length as that ribbon. And um, just so I can have more of the jute twine than any other of the ribbons. And then once I decided what style, how long I wanted it, what I did was just cut it off and then I'm dividing it into four and I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of my ribbons and divide them all into, we'll split those in half and make my tassel for my garland. Now tassels, if you don't know how to make them, you can see a lot of my other tutorials and I slow it down and show you exactly how to make them. Um, you know what the measurements are depending on the length you want so I'll leave some of those tutorials um, linked somewhere around here for you so you can go ahead and watch those after this tutorial of course so just go ahead and grab any kind of ribbon again and I'm grabbing this pretty burlap uh, style ribbon with red hearts which was out in Valentine's some blue ribbon and then some white lacy ribbon so those were the, the designs that I decided to get for mine so once I've grabbed them and folded them, I went ahead and grabbed some more of that rope and I'm going to make um, a knot where 
I want my tassel to end and begin. I guess you could say the head of my tassel is on the top. So once I decided where it's going to be and I tied that knot, I went ahead and grabbed that same ribbon or the same thread that I used to strand my stars. I'm going to go ahead and attach my uh, tassel to my garland. And as you can see, I'm just inserting my needle through those openings of each one of the beads that I placed at the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it, placing it, um, threading it back down in order to make that knot and for the tassel to attach to my garland without me having to glue any more of the garland or tie a knot on to the beads with my garland. And of course, after I did this, I did add a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that that tassel stays in place and stays exactly the way I wanted it. Um, but that's completely optional. You don't have to do that as long as you... Um, tie and run your thread through the beads you'll be perfectly fine and it'll stay just in place just fine so just go ahead and do that as many times as you want um, just to feel comfortable and then I added a little bit of glue right there where the end knot is at at the beginning of my star just to make sure it doesn't run all the way through so once you're done with that, go ahead and just fix your tassel. Make sure they're all even or all the length that you want them. As you can see, I did cut mine a little bit extra long than what I know I wanted to use. Um, so just go ahead and cut those off. And if it's long enough, save them. You never know. You might need that little extra piece of ribbon for something else. Um, but the other smaller ones, basically, I just toss away. So just go ahead and cut off your um, ribbon from your tassel and make sure that it's the style you want and the length you want. And once you're done with that, you're done with your tassel, with your garland. Super easy, super simple, but very cute. It's great to wrap around vases, um, to put just to light on trays on your coffee table. I just love these garlands and I love making them um, for every holiday because it's something that is fun and festive, but it isn't, it doesn't take too much money and it also isn't huge to where it takes up a, a whole lot of space. So for our next project, what I decided to do was I grab, ordered some posters. So I had some larger of these rolls um, and I wanted to save them because they were nice and thick and I decided to go ahead and make some firecrackers with them. So what I did was just measure one out 12 inches, another one 10 inches, and then another one I measured out five inches, I believe it was. Um, so just go ahead and measure them out whatever size you want. And if you don't have these uh, kind of poster board uh, rolls that I had for cardboard, you can use um, the rolls that the napkin rolls that come with your napkins. Um, you can use, for example, the aluminum foil rolls. Or you can just use one of those floaty foams and wrap it around with wrapping paper, which would be a lot easier too because you wouldn't even have to paint them. You can just get the different color tissue paper or wrapping paper and make your fireworks that way. So that's something really easy that you can do as well. But like I said, this is what I had and this is what I wanted to use. So I went ahead and measured out all three of my firecrackers. Then I just grabbed a piece of cardboard and made that circle for the top of my firecracker. <clears throat> and as you can tell all I did was just grab one of those tubes and trace out that circle and then I'm cutting out three of them for all three of my firecrackers once I decided to do these I went on Pinterest and I saw all different designs so you can go as elaborate as you like with these I basically wanted to keep them as simple as possible and just paint them solid colors but I saw some with the American flag with stars with wording on them so yeah there's a lot of different ways you can do these as well so once you're done cutting your circle what I did was just cut in the center of each one of my little round circles um, and that's just in order for me to um, insert and thread my jute twine or your nautical rope depending on how big you want or how thick you want your flame uh, string to be. So just cut an opening through the center of your circles and then you can just insert your rope through there and then just leave those aside while we start painting all of them. So we're gonna paint the top as well as the tubes themselves. And I just grabbed the colors that I had on hand. This is the navy blue from Apple Barrel. And that's the color I'm going to use for my largest one. 
again you can pick whichever tube you want to paint it whatever color you want um, that's basically your choice as well so all I did was just grab my brush and paint my uh, largest tube blue and I did paint them twice to make sure that it was a thick enough coat um, since this is cardboard style rolls um, it does absorb the paint a little bit more than uh, paper or anything like that so I went ahead and made a nice thick coat and then I allowed that to dry and then I painted it again. So just go ahead and make it two coats, uh, depending on how thick or what kind of um, item you're using to make your firecrackers. So go ahead and set that aside once it's all nice and painted and allow that to dry while you continue painting the rest of your firecrackers. The next one I'll be painting is the red and as you can see this one was a dollar from that oops paint that you can get at Walmart, Lowe's, um, Home Depot. Just go through the painting um, area of your department, the store, and usually they have paints that were returned or you know that they uh, mixed up the different colors or the wrong colors so you can get those very very inexpensive and I like to go through there just to see if I can find different colors that I know I typically use or just colors that I like so this one I can't tell you exactly what color it is but it's kind of like a brick red and that's the color that I decided to use for my red and then here all I'm doing is just painting my circle that's going to go on top of my uh, firecracker the same color so I'm painting this one red. Of course, I painted one blue and one white as well. And again, just go ahead and set those aside. Now the white one, I did have to give it three coats. I don't know if it was the white paint that I was using or what but um for some reason it just wouldn't take as dark as i wanted it to be so i had to do give it um three good coats so that's just something that you might want to think about as well depending on the colors you're using um it might be how many layers or coats you'll have to do for each one of your firecrackers so just go ahead and paint them as many times as you need just making sure that you allow the paint to dry in between each one of your coats and then you do the same to your top circle lids as well and it didn't bother me if um, I got some of the paint on the rope but if you don't want that to happen just put like a shish kebab stick or a pin or even your scissors inside that opening and use it to paint and then once they're all dry insert your rope as well so you don't have to insert it afterwards uh, i'm sorry before if you don't want that paint to be shown or um, maybe even paint it on there so once everything is all completely dry just go ahead and grab some hot glue because again this is cardboard and i just glued down that piece of my rope um, that's going to be in inside and then I just added some hot glue around the edge of my circle to attach to my firecracker super easy super simple but very very cute I know I think I love these these are just adorable um, and it basically they were free because uh, the jute twine or the nautical rope that I had I already had it on hand my paints you know as you could see they were all 50 cents or a dollar so for each one of these maybe 20 cents because of that cardboard circles that I'm just recycling so just to let you know you don't have to spend so much money on home decor especially for holidays if you um, you know because you know you're only gonna use it for a few weeks out of the year so try to be creative and do things differently just to get that decor that you want for your home without breaking the bank. So that's why I wanted to show you how you can make these adorable firecrackers um, using pennies. So um, just an idea for you guys. So here I am again just kind of gluing on that nautical rope down. So in case anybody decides to pull on my rope or the firecracker burner area um, it won't come through or slide through that's why I glued my rope down 
and then I went ahead and attached it to my firecracker. So what I did was just kind of figure out where the center is at or where I wanted my nautical rope. And then I just glued a little bit down to start it. And then I just wrapped it around about three to four times. Then I did the same thing, adding a little bit of glue to attach to the back and then remove the extra nautical rope from my firecrackers. And that's it. And you can decorate this again uh, the way you want. I just wanted to keep it nice and simple, but you can add a bows, you can add firecrackers, stars, whatever you want to the front of your firecrackers. Another thing you can do is you can just get grab your lighter and turn on that rope and kind of burn the tips to make them look like they're already used. So our next DIY really isn't a DIY, it's just an assemble. Um, I just wanted to show you what I ended up doing with the rest of my stars that I had from that garland. All I did was use them as a vase filler, but instead of adding flowers to my vase, I went ahead and just grabbed one of these little small fish bowls that you can get at Dollar Tree and one of these silver lights, they're battery operated, and I inserted all my stars around it. So, you know, something simple, but I just wanted to show you what I ended up doing with the rest of those stars from my filler. And all I'm doing is just trying to make the larger stars up, stand up on inside my vase. So now what we're gonna do is our last uh, DIY and basically what you're going to need is one of these little wooden, um, I don't know if they're like cardboard or particle wood type style uh, pictures that you can get at Dollar Tree and these have these little triangles. Don't remove those, uh, throw them away, just remove them off of each one of your corners and also that center square, um, just try to pull it off and remove it. Um, and save them and set them aside. Now what I'm going to do is get my box cutter and I'm going to basically just cut up wherever the folds are at. And now what I'm going to do is just play with these two and they're 12 inches each uh, pieces of wood and try to figure out how to make my four. So what I ended up doing was cutting, since this was 12 inches, I cut a five inch and then the rest was the seven inches and I left it as is in order to shape my four. And then I left the second piece that's 12 inches that length. I didn't cut anything off of that one. So I'm just trying to figure out where I wanna place my four and how I wanna shape it. Um, but yeah, this is the way I did mine. I cut mine at the six, I'm sorry, at the five inch, and then I left the other uh, section larger. So once I've cut all of them off, I kind of removed some of them, that paper or the decor part, but you don't have to do that at all. So just go ahead and start shaping your four, making sure you like it and where it's at, and if it's wide enough the way you want it. And then all I'm going to do is start gluing everything together. And then once I do glue everything together, you'll see that I'm going to start cutting um, the little corners off of that one section of your four in order for it to kind of shape right. So I'm kind of just measuring out where I want to cut it so it can lay flat on my other piece of wood. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way, go ahead and print out um, a number four and then just place your pieces of wood on top of that printout and then just cut them as you need to shape it the same way. So here I am just cutting that angle off and then I'm just going to add some hot glue to attach it to my um, other larger piece of wood to start forming my number four. And just make sure you allow it to dry, hold it in place for a little bit. And then I'm going to flip it over and just make sure it stays in place there as well. And I decided to go ahead and add an extra little piece of wood to that back part in order for it to stay in place since I wasn't too sure it would stay just by adding that glue in the center to attach the two pieces together. So I just went ahead and decided to add an extra little piece of wood in the back. But you, if you don't have that extra piece of wood, just go ahead and grab a popsicle stick or something like that to attach there. So next I went ahead and just removed that little point from the outside of my number four 
in order to make that angle for me to glue my bottom piece of number four on here. But you can leave it there. I mean, it looks perfectly fine, but I just wanted to make it more of that cleaner line. So I just went ahead and got my box cutter and removed that piece off. And this would be adorable to use even as a centerpiece for a birthday party or something like that. If you just change the colors and not make it uh, patriotic colors, you can make it, you know, Spider-Man colors or Batman colors or even a unicorn colors. So this is just something that you can do, not just for 4th of July, but you can use and do with any number and make it as a centerpiece. So that's just another, another idea for you guys to use this project for. So what I decided to do was that extra larger thick piece that came with the picture as well. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in four. So I cut two sides the same length and then two other sides the same length. And I'm going to make a box and this is going to be the bottom or my display box. So again, all I'm going to do is just grab those corners that came with the picture as well. And I'm going to glue them onto my larger pieces making sure I glue them on right to where the angles at the back in order for me to attach all my other pieces together to make a square. Now again, I used just one picture for all of this. So basically this project right here cost me a dollar to make this part of the section of the decor. So here I am just attaching both pieces together using those little corners that came with the picture. And then I'm going to make the smaller piece on the other side. And just cut off any extra pieces that you might not need on your box in order for it to stay in place and stay right. So once that was done, I wanted to place a bottom to my box. So what I did was basically glued that hook that comes with the picture in order for me to use it as a stand to add my four into my box. So what I did also was I grabbed another piece of just some backing of a picture frame that I had extra to cut a square out in order to make the bottom of my square. But if you don't have that, you can easily use cardboard or even just like I did a picture frame. So just different things that you can use to make the bottom of your box. And I attached it all with hot glue since it's all just cardboard. Then I inserted that uh, piece, that extra piece that I had from um, the hook part of my picture in order for me to use it to stand my number four. And I just put that in the center. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and paint my box and I decided to go ahead and paint it the blue, the same um, navy blue that I used for my firecrackers. And again, just make sure you allow it to dry before you give it a second coat. So what I decided to do was paint my number four, a red, the red color. And all I did was paint the front first, and then I allowed it to dry, flipped it over, and painted the back. Again, giving it two coats as well.
So while, while everything was drying, I went ahead and grabbed this ribbon that I had gotten from Dollar Tree as well. Now, I just grabbed a longer piece, um, the size that I wanted my bow to be. But instead of make, keeping it that thick, what I did was I cut it into three strands. Using the same rope, then I made it into like a cancer sign and then I glued it to make it a bow. So first what I did was glue it to make a cancer sign. I allowed that little section to dry, then I just folded that top part over to make a bow. So that's a simple way to make an easy, simple bow as well without making that knot look in the center. So once I tied them all into bows, or I'm sorry, glued them all into bows, I'm just going to attach them all together the way I normally do, make one in the center, then fold one to an angle from the opposite side, and then another one the opposite way in order for all the tails to be on the bottom, but to be kind of winged out to make it look kind of like a fan, I guess you could say in the bottom. So once I did that, I went ahead and just trimmed all the tails to make them look nice and clean. Then I attached everything together. I put some hot glue in the center of my um, hook where I told you that I put it in the center, just held my number four down and I glued it together. Then I put some of this fake green grass that I had gotten at Dollar Tree before Easter. Um, but you can use any kind of moss or anything like that. Then I used one of these um, garden hooks that are have a star that you can place in your garden. I basically just removed that metal part, that hook, and I attached it to my number four using my hot glue gun. Then I grabbed my bow and just attached it to my box. So again, another simple, easy project, but I thought it looked really adorable and it was cute to put in my kitchen, more like a farmhouse style. Um, but let me know which one is your favorite and if you're going to do all four of these or if you're going to just, just do one. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and share with friends and family. It'll truly help my, fam my channel grow. And again, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. Until next time, you guys stay safe and stay blessed. Bye.